The following technique video will demonstrate how to accomplish a safe, reproducible anatomic reconstruction for a soft tissue ACL procedure using the rigid fixed curve cross pin system. For more than a decade, orthopedic surgeons have relied on the rigid fix cross pin system for strength and rigidity in their ACL reconstruction procedures. Today, with the newly designed rigid fix curve cross pin system, surgeons are able to achieve a more anatomic reconstruction through the anteromedial working portal while realizing the intrinsic qualities established by the first generation rigid fix. First, Harvest and prepare the soft tissue graft by folding it in half. Whip stitch the looped end of the graft for a total of 30 millimeters and mark the graft at 30 millimeters. Use the sizing block to measure the graft's diameter. Next, establish a standard anterolateral viewing portal. Then, using a spinal needle, establish a low anteromedial portal that will be used to drill the femoral tunnel. The correct placement for this portal is distal to the inferior pole of the patella, superior to the medial meniscus, and just medial to the medial edge of the patella tendon. This prescribed anteromedial portal placement will maximize the lateral bone stock for cross pin insertion. Lateral bone stock is the distance between the tip of the pins and the lateral femoral cortex. Caution. Placement of the anteromedial drilling portal is most critical. Make sure not to deviate medially from the prescribed anteromedial portal, as this will reduce lateral bone stock and increase the risk of cross pin protrusion. With the knee at 90 degrees, use an offset aimer to introduce the guide pin to the center of the native ACL footprint. Prior to drilling, Hyperflex the knee to 120 degrees. Make sure the tip of the guide pin is directed to exit above the lateral midline of the femoral shaft to maximize lateral bone stock. Then, drill the guide pin into the femur. Select the reamer size to match the graft diameter and ream the femoral tunnel to a depth of 30 millimeters. Select the femoral rod size to match the femoral tunnel diameter and attach it to the rigid fix curved frame. Here, the left knee configuration is shown. Pass the femoral rod and curve assembly over the guide pin. Then, insert the rod into the femoral tunnel, ensuring the frame is located on the medial side of the knee. The frame is marked left and right to correspond with the operative knee. Make sure the femoral rod is inserted to a depth of 30 millimeters. Then, remove the guide pin. Palpate the bony anatomy of the medial femur and locate the medial epicondyle. Using this landmark, mark a position on the patient's skin that is approximately 2.5 centimeters anterior to the coronal plane perpendicular to the axis of the femur and 2.5 centimeters proximal this marks the proper entry position for the trocar, sleeves, and cross pins. Orient the block to this marked position and secure it into place. Hold the frame carefully to maintain position within the femoral tunnel. It is critical that the rod stays at the 30 millimeter depth and does not back out during the rest of the procedure. Caution. Make sure the block is positioned correctly anterior to the medial epicondyle to avoid the trocar diverging into the posterior of the knee. Next, attach the arc securely to the frame. The arc is used to determine the available lateral bone stock. Insert the bone gauge pin through the arc hole so that it penetrates the patient's skin and maintains contact with the lateral femoral cortex. Then, look for the laser line on the bone gauge pin. This line indicates that there is sufficient lateral bone stock. The distance between the back of the laser line and the arc surface equals the measurement of lateral bone stock. If the laser line is not visible, then slightly adjust the block or rotate the frame about the tunnel axis. But make sure that the block maintains a position anterior to the medial epicondyle. Then, recheck the lateral bone stock with the bone gauge pin and, if acceptable, 
mark the new entry location on the patient's skin, and continue with the procedure. Caution. After adjusting, if the laser line is not visible on the bone gauge pin, then implant protrusion will occur. Therefore, an alternate device must be used for femoral fixation. Assemble the first sleeve over the interlocking trocar and position it in the bottom hole of the block. Then, make an incision at the previously marked location where the trocar sleeve assembly will enter the knee. Drill the trocar sleeve assembly into the medial side of the knee until the sleeve shoulder meets the block. As the assembly is advancing forward, make sure both elements are spinning together. By design, the trocars do not cross the femoral tunnel or penetrate into bone on the other side. The sleeves do not enter the femoral tunnel. When the sleeve is in place, reverse spin the trocar to disengage and remove it from the sleeve. Then repeat these steps to drill the second sleeve through the block's top hole. The rigid fixed curve system has precisely positioned the depth of the sleeves with respect to the femoral tunnel to ensure exact cross pin placement. With both sleeves now in place, disengage and remove the bone gauge pin, arc, and block cover. Rotate the frame away from the sleeves. Using a guide pin and arthroscope, check the cross pin hole location within the femoral tunnel. Pull the graft through the tibial tunnel and into the femoral tunnel to a depth of 30 millimeters. Insert a cross pin into the top sleeve using the pusher rod and small rigid fix mallet. Gently advance the cross pin until the laser line on the pusher rod is aligned with the top surface of the sleeve. This ensures that the cross pins are placed in the correct location with respect to the femoral tunnel. Then, repeat these steps to insert the second cross pin through the bottom sleeve. Caution. Do not overdrive the pins. Make sure that the laser line on the pusher rod is aligned with the top surface of the sleeve and not beyond it. If the laser line is advanced beyond this position, then lateral bone stock is reduced, which increases the risk of cross pin protrusion through the lateral cortex. Carefully remove the sleeves with the removal tool, then complete tibial fixation according to standard practices. Using the rigid fix curve system and following these steps will help maximize lateral bone stock and decrease the risk of cross pin protrusion. The rigid fix curve cross pin system offers surgeons a safe, effective, and reproducible solution for an anatomic soft tissue ACL reconstruction through the anteromedial technique. This unique cross pin technology also offers 360 degrees of graft to bone contact plus added compression to improve healing and close to aperture fixation, all providing a strong, rigid reconstruction.